members of the committee, and I guess I see applicants as well. And uh, as you're aware, New York State Executive Order 202.1, Nelly? 202.1 permits us to meet during the pandemic through Zoom online. Uh, and I just want everybody to be aware that this is a public meeting. It's being recorded, broadcast live, as they say, on YouTube. Or well, we'll be, are we alive on YouTube, Nellie? We're, we're going to be now. We're going to be now, okay. So it's recorded and gonna be live on YouTube. We're all television stars, right. Okay, and for those of you who are here for the first time, the Business License and Permits Committee makes recommendations to the full board, which meets the first Wednesday of the month, which will be in September, very early. I think it's September 2nd? That's right. September 2nd. Uh, Labor Day is the latest it can be, and our community board is the earliest it can be in September. September 2nd. So we make a recommendation to the full board. The full board either adopts or modifies our recommendation. And in terms of the state liquor authority, liquor license applications, our recommendations go to the SLA. The SLA has the authority to give licenses or withhold licenses. We do not have that authority. We make recommendations. Um, so welcome everybody. We have a reduced agenda or a limited agenda, let's say it that way. We had actually three applicants who were originally on the agenda and they have withdrawn or postponed. Item number five on the agenda has, with, has postponed to a future date and items six and seven, applicants under six and seven have withdrawn. So we only have four. So let's start with number one. That's the best way to start. Oh, Bert, wait, you wait, wait, I, no, I don't want to jump into starting because my co-chair, Frank, has something to say. Well, first I wanted to welcome our new committee member, uh, Carrie Keenan, who's uh, new to the community board and new to this committee. It's our first meeting tonight. Uh, and just to remind everyone of the procedure, uh, the people you're seeing on screen are the committee members and the applicants and their representatives. Uh, everyone else is uh, only what's called a participant attendee and is allowed to observe. As we call each uh, agenda item, if um, you would like to speak on the item, uh, please uh, use the uh, raise your hand function uh, in the, uh, at the bottom of the screen. And uh, Nelly Gonzalez, our assistant district manager, uh, will move you into the meeting for that applicant so you can speak. Uh, anyone can speak on any applicant for up to two minutes. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. So welcome, Carrie. And let's go now to item number one, which was 149 West 14th Street, Chama Mama. Uh, they're applying to use their backyard, rear yard, as they call it. The Yes, <laughs> the rear yard. Uh, so I am Zara Lucas of Elke Hoffman Law, and Tamara, the uh, owner of the establishment, Chama Mama, I believe she's here. She's logged in, but we can't see her. Um, I'm here, Where my you? dear. I'm here. Okay. Hello, Daryl. Um, and we, so we appeared last month. Um, to present kind of uh, two parts uh, of this application um, or uh, for this applicant. And so the first one was a temporary um, approval of the backyard space with all of the current COVID exceptions um, and, and then to permanently amend their license application so that when these exceptions do expire um, that they would be allowed to continue to operate uh, in the backyard. Um, and so last month when we appeared, um, there, uh, there were some concerns expressed by members of the, by a few neighbors who are on 15th street, 
um, and the committee um, uh, to an extent at their request because some neighbors being out of town and not necessarily being able to um, uh, attend the meeting um, uh, recommended that perhaps we, we hold off and the, the, the temporary approval was granted through until October. Um, considering that things right now are kind of flyby and we're getting like the extension for um, the SLA's backyard um, uh, exception actually didn't happen until probably after 5 p.m. the day of August 5th. Um, we sat there just waiting with bated breaths wondering when the SLA and whether they were actually going to extend it and they did and they extended it through um, September um, and now we uh, uh, where we're, you know, we're going to be playing that game, I, I, I believe now, until the warm weather season is over, um, but we do want to move forward with the application. And so during the last few weeks, what has happened is uh, Tamara has continued to do outreach to the community. Uh, I submitted, I emailed over to Nelly um, just about 200 um, additional signatures, petitions that she received. Um, and I believe some were emailed directly to the community as well. Uh, Tamara also did, uh, she reached out to a local acoustic um, company uh, to get a proposal about what she can do um, with regard to the backyard and to limiting the noise and how you know, it extends and affects the neighbors and how they can dampen sound. And that proposal was also uh, sent over to uh, the committee. Um, and I, I guess pretty much um, the, the questionnaire details the number of seats in the backyard, the maximum occupancy back there is 45. Um, she'll try to maximize the seats there as much as possible. Um, and so, you know, right now about 20 to 22 tables um, and about, you know, maximum 44. Um, that, that would vary, you know, depending on the layout and what's not. Um, and uh, if I can talk about, and let me just mention, because that was something that came up uh, last month, she is agreeing to you know, the community board's recommendation in terms of hours. Um, she won't be operating past your recommended hours. Um, right now she's closing at 10. Um, and uh, if I you know, will touch a little bit on what was in, I don't know if all of you got the opportunity to see the proposal. Um, but I know since sound um, was a major concern for the residents on 15th Street, um, some of the recommendations of the, and Tamara can, can speak about her conversations with um, the acoustic company, um, but they detail what their recommendations are based on the current, exist, uh, the, the current conditions of the backyard, which pretty much is, is there's a lot of, there are a lot of hard surfaces and they're, there isn't other than some shrubbery, um, a lot of, of barriers to sound. And so what they recommended uh, were um, outdoor carpeting. Um, some things that she can do uh, pretty quickly is adding additional shrubbery, um, which I, uh, Tamara can speak to whether or not she has been able to acquire those. And then long-term would be to order some uh, acoustical tiles and have those installed and those obviously will take some time. Uh, she had some plans to replace the doorway, um, which cur currently now, um, how it's constructed, it's kind of like it, there, there's noise emanating a staff like come in and out. And that was something that they, um, that they noticed and, make a recommend and made a recommendation to her about possibly you know, trying to find ways to reduce um, the sound from um, that, that coming and going with the staff. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think Tamara has, has, you know, she's doing her best um, right now. The, the only operating space that she has, like most businesses in New York, is, is that backyard. And, and it's, it's keeping her above ground for the time being. Um, whether, it's able, whether she's able to meet all of her expenses during this time and how long that's going to continue um, is really, you know, a large concern. And, and hopefully when some of, you know, we've gotten past this current hurdle that we're, we're in and, and she's able to, you know, operate fully, um, there's a lot of recouping that's going to need to happen. And, and having those additional seats in the backyard is, is going to be super important. And so um, in addition to making sure that her business stays in operation, 
um, she, she's, she's obviously, you know, going to ensure that her neighbors um, are not disturbed uh, because she is a, a community establishment. She is a neighborhood place. A lot of her, her um, regulars are from the neighborhood and you see that in the petitions, you see that in the emails. Um, and so we do hope that we can get your um, recommendation of approval for this, this permit alteration based on, you know, the work that she's willing to do um, to, you know, be a good neighborhood business. Uh, so I gather you'd agree to a stipulation that you'll uh, uh, implement all the suggestions in the acoustic report? Yes, yes, in as much as, 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 as it is possible. And, and then most of their recommendations are, you know, these are because of in the current state of, you know, everything is, is really out of stock everywhere and taking some time, things like acoustical tiles will take will take a little bit of time for her to acquire um, in terms of, you know, factories being able to provide um, those, those things in a timely matter, production and what's not. Uh, but everything else, um, in the, like the shrubbery and, you know, she can, you know, find some, some carpeting and stuff to put back there. Tamara is definitely willing to do that. And Tamara can, can, can hop in and, you know, speak to, you know, what she's done and what she's able to do um, in the interim. Um, we're assuming that, you know, she'll be able to continue to operate. Um, she's already made some, some, some moves, you know, by putting the plants there, you know, uh, increasing the height of her fence, which was a recommendation or concern expressed by one of the neighbors. Um, and so she's already in the process of doing these things. So yes, she most definitely will. Tamara, do you want to jump in and talk about what you've done? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, Sarah, and um, thank you, community. So what, what I've done is I've reached out to three uh, um, most established outdoor acoustical companies, consulting companies, and I've had all three of them uh, at the backyard of Chama Mama, and we diligently learned how the noise travels uh, in the backyard. And uh, as uh, Sarah said, we've already um, sent the proposal to the community board. Uh, what was very interesting is that we could cure some issues right away, uh, which uh, are some evergreens, and we've already installed 19 of them um, two days ago, um, Monday morning actually, so it's uh, already there. We're working on the carpeting or the rubbering on the floor, and we'll make sure that uh, it will be installed also right away. And the next uh, things were acoustical panels and also what um, professional, acoustical professional told me was that right now we exit the door right in front of the neighbor's uh, windows on the 15th street. And what we will need uh, is we basically have to have the awnings that will be more of a fabric and we can close that exit and we can have a different exit and entrance throughout the wall but again that has to go through DOB, the uh, department of buildings so that's a more of a longer cure but the show will be done in the next uh, week or so and then like the consultant told me he needs to come and see every time we install the short proposal because nowadays it's very hard to get those acoustical panels in a week or 10 days because those are for pre-order and they need to travel some from overseas to make sure that he basically told me that he has done many concerts throughout the community also, his community, so he cures that noise, but he needs some time to make sure that we do it in the right way. So I'm willing to do anything and everything to make sure that um, the community is happy, my staff is happy, my guests are happy, and of course I'm happy too. So thank you so much, and I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as was made available to the committee, the uh, five more uh, letters of support uh, came in since uh, we considered this last month. I just want to summarize them briefly in case people didn't get a chance to read them. Uh, one person says, I reside at 140 West 15th Street for the past 12 years. Chama Mom has been an exceptional new neighbor and a wonderful addition to our neighborhood. I have two large windows that face their back garden dining area. Not only have they beautified the space aesthetically and kept it well manicured, but they brought more kind people into the community by way of hiring staff that has always been courteous and welcoming. 
The environment is, of Charmamama is one that is more refined. I trust Charmamama is a place I can enjoy quiet meals and would not have any concern that it may be a place that would ever be loud or create any kind of disruption. I'm so happy to have them as backyard neighbors. They're truly a welcome addition to the space tucked away between our buildings. Uh, someone who lives at 149 West 14th says, our apartment faces the backyard of the building. We're going on in a third year in the apartment. We really love Chamamama. We've never had any noise issues with them being right downstairs since the time they opened in 2019. Uh, we hear Chamamama recently opened backyard dining. We're excited to try it out. Um, someone else, uh, um, lives at uh, West 13th Street. How difficult it is for restaurants to survive on 14th Street. We're delighted when they opened. Uh, staff is always friendly and comfortable. I understand you must be judicious about outdoor dining. You're balancing many needs. All the same with so many restaurants struggling. I think it's important to help places like Chama Mama survive. Um, uh, someone at uh, 149 West 14th as well. Uh, the volume of noise is at a minimum. The atmosphere is a quiet one. Okay, Bert. Any uh, questions from committee members? Yeah, um, who went to see this? Frank, did you go with Christine? Who went to see this initially? Uh, Frank and I went. And went. Nelly, I think he was there too. Yeah, we went uh, right. cyberly. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I've seen the pictures and it looks like it could work and there's a lot of support from the community. I, we didn't get copies of any of the acoustic log or acoustic reports. I don't know, do we have those? Yeah, it came in this afternoon. Nelly uh, put it in the Dropbox and sent a reminder to everyone to, right. to check the application. It was late in the afternoon around 5.30. They may not have seen it. I didn't see it in the drop off, but okay. Nelly, can you send that to me when you get a chance? It's, it's the same document that's in Dropbox. I replaced it with, it's at the end of the document. Oh yeah, no, I'm not seeing that at the end of the document, so. Okay, I'll, I'll send it to you. Well, at the end of the application, I see the pictures and the diagrams and that's it's after, it. It's after the pictures. Yeah. There's so, this and the petitions. Yeah, so mine ends, I see the letters that you put in the Dropbox, but I don't see anything other than the pictures. So right. I just it's, it's two separate links. One was for okay. testimony, and then the other one was the, the regular stuff. All right, I'll look for it. Um, but if you guys have looked at it, I'm fine with that. I mean, for me, there's a lot of support from immediate neighbors. Usually we don't get this. Um, I don't know. Is 14th Street, are they allowed to have restaurants on the street on 14th? Like the other street restaurants in front of the street? The issue with 14th Street is yeah. that first lane where you might want to put a table yeah, adjusts no the bus lane. That's okay. That's what I wasn't sure of. Okay, so that eventually they may have to move that someday and reconfigure it for other restaurants that don't have a backyard. But for me, I'm, I'm, I think they're trying and I think we have enough support. So I'm in favor of it, but I'll let everyone else speak and the public. Nelly, has anyone signed up? No one has a raised hand from the public. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with this applicant. Um, seems like she's going above and beyond. And I think this is the type of applicant that we want in our community. Um, I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, let's, just to summarize, so the steps will be that they're gonna implement uh, the recommendations of the acoustic report, and then I'd like to carry over three from our temporary letter. There'll be no music or amplified sound in the rear yard. Doors of the rear yard will be closed, except when used for entering and exiting, and all patrons must be seated. You okay with those? Mm -hmm. And the uh, recommendations of the acoustic report will be implemented. Are you, uh, Tamara and... Uh, yes, Tamara? yes, absolutely. Okay. We uh, agree. If also, I, I didn't see attached to the application a floor plan for the uh, post-COVID full rear yard. Could you get us one of those? Yes, we can get you um, a final layout. In other words, the way it'll look. Yeah, so how, it, how it will be laid out, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, Nelly, what's the deadline for that? I will tell you right now. Hold on one second. I will need it by August 26th. Okay. Okay. The other thing I'd suggest, Noted. so you don't keep coming back to us and we can include as part of this motion, is that our temporary approval continues to be extended as the SLA extends your ability to use the rear yard. So if they extend it beyond October 1, uh, you know, our approval will continue in effect and you don't okay. have to Thank keep, you. keep coming back to us. Okay, so we have a motion and we have it seconded. All those in favor? All those Aye. opposed? Thank you, Rob. All those opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible. Okay. Thank you. Can I just say one thing? I noticed in the pictures that they have benches outside, which are nice, but not allowed. I'm not going to say anything about that. But then there's a table and then sandwich boards. I just want to make sure they're not taking too much of the sidewalk because none of that's allowed. As long as you're being, so there's enough room for people to walk. If you look at the front of the restaurant. Yeah. They have oh, out front, yes. Yeah, they have a table and then they have the sidewalk board even out farther. Um, yeah. The A-frame and then the benches. None of that's legal at all. We don't enforce it, but so just be aware of that and try not to hog up the sidewalk. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Moving on Thank to you. item number Thank two. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Good luck. 214 10th Avenue, Don Giovanni. This is an alteration of an existing liquor license. This is an establishment that has been there for many years. It wants to upgrade its liquor license to on-premises, full service bar. That's correct. Hi, this is uh, Marco Cotto Batres. Uh, we're the attorneys for uh, Don Giovanni uh, and uh, Kim Cohen. Uh, she's the principal of the business. I believe she's also on. Kim, are you here? I see she's participating, but maybe she has her. Nellie, do you see her? I see her. She's uh, going to I think she just has her, her phone on mute. Um, okay, well, we want to thank the community board uh, for the opportunity. To present this. Um, I'm sure many of you know Don Giovanni uh, from many, oh many my God. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. It's Kimmy. Okay. Hi. Hi everyone. Uh, so uh, just like let me briefly introduce this and I'll hand it over to Kimmy uh, to tell you a little bit more about it. Um, so what Don Giovanni is trying to do right now is um, it is going through some sort of restructuring um, based on the, the COVID period. Um, obviously as you can imagine, most places along 10th Avenue, uh, I'm sure you've seen, you know, closed signs or for sale signs. Um, so Don Giovanni is trying to adjust that uh, by upgrading their, their license to a full liquor license to be able to serve their patrons, um, you know, cocktails um, or anything other than wine, beer, and uh, and cider, uh, which they currently have. Um, so this is the this is the main reason for the upgrade. Um, their uptown location as well, um, just to kind of give you an overview, the uptown location is also going through a restructuring currently. Um, and they're also, um, no, they have a full liquor license. Um, so we want to be able to match the two up so that they can provide the same services, the same goods to their patrons, not only uptown, but also in Chelsea. Um, and I think the uptown location, I think, I believe community board four is also um, under that or that uptown location is under that jurisdiction, I should say. Uh, and so I think you guys are familiar with that as well. Um, so I'll let Kimmy take it from here uh, and add a little bit of color to this application. Um, thank you everyone for having me today. Um, we decided basically after 30 years that we wanted to file for a different class application because first and foremost, um, it's been, our restaurant was hit, both of our restaurants was hit very hard with COVID. My 44th Street location was broken into twice um, and we had to open and close and we were looted. And um, 
I can't even begin to tell you how much that cost us in expenses, but we decided that we thought that we really needed some extra income because we don't think we'll survive. And although the Chelsea location remained open uh, throughout COVID for delivery, we now see that a lot of the clientele from Empire Diner, who's my next door neighbor that was open from 78, 1978, that had opened and closed several times, um, their patrons were always coming there for alcoholic beverages, including, including dining. And they were coming to us thereafter looking for another place to have um, an Aperol spritz or whatever they were looking for and I couldn't provide it. And I realized that I was also losing a lot of clientele. And because of that, you know, I decided to file for, to apply for another class of application and we're there 30 years. We never thought that we needed a liquor license nor did I ever care to have a liquor license for 30 years because we were fine with wine and beer, but we are suffering right now and we are trying to do anything to add into our income. So we would uh, really appreciate that you would review my application and uh, know that we've never had any cases of inebriated people laying on my sidewalk. It's never been a party place. It's never been a place that people congregate at the bar for beers or wine. Everybody has always come and dined and ate and left and we've closed early. We've never made any problems to the neighborhood. You know, we've uh, been a very vital part as a matter of fact to the neighborhood and to the community um, doing a lot of different kinds of contributions throughout our 30 years. And um, so, I mean, I, I guess that's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to clarify one quite one issue about your hours. Uh, on your form, you have your closing uh, Sunday to Thursday at 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Friday and Sunday, Friday and Saturday. Um, what we mean by the closing time is the time your establishment's vacated of all patrons. It's not last call or last reservation. So I just wanted to make sure those Hours seemed on the early side to me. I just wanted to make sure you understood that the way we the way we deal with closing hours, it's the time the place is empty of patrons. Are you still okay with the 10 and 11 or do you need it? To um, well, okay. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was talking to Marco about this beforehand. Um, when we wrote 10, that's because of the new laws of COVID in general, had we had not had COVID in place or any of this disastrous situation, we would be closing at 1030. Everybody's gone except my kitchen, who's pretty much there maybe till 11, but no one's in there being served. So, and in general, there's a, most of the days, I mean, at least in the summertime from what I'm seeing, because it's been pretty barren for the most part, we even close earlier. You know, I'm not going to have my guys hang around if they could get on the train and go home quickly. Yeah, but this will be a permanent change to your license and hopefully we'll see the other side of COVID someday. So post COVID, you're okay with all the customers being gone by 10 or 11 or do you want to make it 11 across the board? Or? We can make it 11 across the board, but I, w I do know I'm going to be closing earlier because Regardless of anything, I'm still also paying hourly. So I get, you yeah. know, and we're watching every dime that comes out of our pockets yeah. right now. No, you don't, that would be perfect if you could do that, sir. Yeah, you don't have to be open these hours. These are just the hours that are going to, if this gets approved by us and the SLA, it'll be the hours on your license. Um, That's fine. I just this wanted gives you a to lot, this leeway yeah. and wiggle room. I appreciate that. Thank you. I just wanted to summarize uh, two letters we got. Uh, one is from uh, Alan Oster, who's a CB4 member, but is writing in his capacity as president of the West 400 Block Association on 21st, 22nd, and 23rd Street. He says, I'm writing in support to upgrade the license. This restaurant, which is in, within the boundaries of our Block Association, has been owned and operated by the same family for the past 30 years. They've been an outstanding business neighbor, maintaining a clean environment and respectful relationship with residents. During the current pandemic, Don Giovanni remained open, serving the public and keeping its staff employed. 
We have no cause for this application to be denied. And then we have a letter from the Greenwich Village Chelsea uh, Chamber of Commerce from their executive director who would like to express her strong support for Don Giovanni. He's been serving the community and visitors for 30 years. Don Giovanni has been a community player demonstrated by donations to FDNY, Local Engine 3, Ladder 12, Battalion 7. Additionally, the restaurant was very helpful to groups within the community during 9 and 11. Uh, we ask you to support this request as they're a valuable member of the Chamber of Commerce, but also an important member of the vibrant and unique culture of the Chelsea community. Uh, Don Giovanni participated in the Chamber's Chelsea Chew event where neighborhood, neighborhood businesses come together to promote the delicious and diverse food offerings of Chelsea. They help stimulate the local economy and show to us all that they give back to the community. Bert? Okay, community member, uh, okay. committee members, Inga, I see yep. your hand is raised. Uh, yes, I'm going to speak as a community member and a board member. So first as the committee member, um, I'm totally in, in favor of this application. And I think you might want to bring your hours up for the weekend to 12 o'clock at night. You do not have to stay open, but if you do, two years from now, you can. So don't limit yourself that way. I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you may want to stay later. And you don't, you could close at nine if you want, but it's on your license. So I suggest you extend those three nights to midnight. That's up to you. And again, as a committee member, I'm in support of this as a resident, a neighbor. And now I'm speaking on, on behalf of the London Terrace Tenants Association. They are amazing neighbors. They support the Tenants Association. They support the local community. They are always friendly. Anytime I've ever called in the past, she picks up the phone immediately and is supportive of all of the residents. And London Terrace is huge. So on behalf of the London Terrace Tenants Association and myself personally, I support this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, anybody else on the committee? Yeah, I'd like to say something uh, for Mike here. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, no, everything about this application is wonderful. I wish every, everyone was like this. And as a, 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 somebody who lives right down the street, I can tell you this is one of the better places around in, in all respects. So I'm fully uh, supportive of this. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. and I'll take my hat off as co-chair. I'll take my hat off as co-chair and talk just as a committee member and as a neighbor. And I completely second exactly what Inga and Mike have been saying. I am a neighbor also from 24th Street and 10th Avenue and have been around as long as Don Giovanni has been around. And I love it. And it's a great addition to the community. Good neighbors. Thank you. Is it too early to make a motion? Let's see first, Rob, let's see if anybody has signed up from the community, Nelly. Nobody has a hand raised. Okay, Rob, you want to make a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion wait, wait, that we move. On, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, Nelly. Is one person? One person just raised their hand. Hold on one second. Okay. Sorry, Rob. Guy? Can you hear me? I can speak now, yes. Okay. Oh no, I live on uh, 43 and 9 at Manhattan, Manhattan Plaza. And uh, my wife and I go to Don Giovanni's all the time. I love these people. Their food is great. They're the nicest people you ever want to meet. And uh, man, I'm all for anything they want to do. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Okay, Rob. Um, I just want to clarify, uh, was there an agreement for extended hours on weekends? Did the owner say yes to that? Um, it, do, do, does everyone hear me? Yes. I, um, I'm sorry. Um, I, I was just suggested by, by London Terrace um, Association 
and um, the community board um, that I should probably think of uh, extending Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to 12 p.m. And I think she's right because I don't know what's in the near future. And if these, these, this turns around, I might be stuck with hours that I might regret. And I, I, I do agree with her. Although I tend to be shy from those hours, I'd like to have some leeway if you don't mind that I make that change right now. Nope, not at all. So based upon that, I would like to make a motion of the new hours put forward to accept this. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Those Aye. Against? Those against? Abstaining? Present not eligible? I think it passes. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you so much. With enthusiastic community support. That's great. Uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, at the end of the agenda, we're going to have a brief discussion about a, a general topic. We've been getting a lot of questions from the community about whether liquor licenses can be transferred if the entire business is being sold. Uh, so we just want to talk about that for a few minutes when we get done with the uh, published agenda. Kimmy, good luck. Thank you so much for all your support. I know I don't get to see everyone right now, but God, I'm sending the biggest hug to everyone, you know, in the community board and, and in the neighborhood. We, we really love our neighbors and we're not in it about, I mean, the end of the day, if it was always about the money, we would have had a liquor license in the first place. My family is not about that. But to us, it was always about our neighbors and the community and, you know, a day like today just so, so shows us and my family what impact we've made. And you don't always hear it every day until, you know, you have this moment that you're in a group. And wow, you know, it really means everything, all the hard work and coming together and Sandy and any catastrophe that we've had. We have the nicest neighbors in Chelsea and in, in Hell's Kitchen, honestly. And I'm really proud of that. Thank you. Good you're luck. not just a great neighbor you're part of the family here in chelsea as well as hell's kitchen uh, that means everything to me thank you so much thank you and everyone please be safe i appreciate okay. it good luck thank bye you bye-bye the next two uh applicants are for new these are not existing restaurants these are new applications for wine and beer and cider, as they say. The first one, item number three, is 180 7th Avenue. That's for a beer, wine, beer, and uh, cider license. Uh, this is 7th Avenue between 22nd and 23rd Street. It is called Chelsea, Chelsea Pasta, though, as <laughs> it's been pointed out a number of times, the menu says Chelsea Pizza. But I'm sure we have an explanation from that. Okay. Good, good evening. My name is Robert Callahan from Michael Kelly, Inc. Uh, with me is uh, uh, the, the owner of the establishment is also on. Uh, Nelly, if you could unmute Brandon Fay. Do you hear me? Yeah, Unmuted. Okay, great. Thank you. So we're a small Italian restaurant. Basically, we serve pizzas and pastas. Um, very small. We have a capacity of 25 people in the establishment. There's going to be three large tables with 17 seats, and that's all we hold. So we're looking for a wine and beer license. Uh, our hours of operation are going to be Monday to Friday, 11.45 to 1 a.m., and Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, there'll be light ambient background music from an iPod or an iPad in the background. Um, no open windows or doors, and we have no outside seating. If you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Yeah, so is your doing this DBA, is it pasta by Hudson or pizza by Hudson? So how are you doing? Allow me to introduce myself. Brandon, really, really nice to meet everybody. Hi. Um, yeah, to add to the, uh, to even more of the confusion. Yeah, it's actually, it's, Pasta by Hudson. Okay. Well, that's what you yeah. had on the floor. Pasta by Hudson. The, the menu listed mostly pizza. Uh, yeah, you should have uh, two menus. It's uh, 
uh, actually a nice even mix of both. It's fresh pasta and fresh pizza. Yeah, what and I was the pasta is made in. Yeah, what I was referring to is this thing, which has the heading "Pizza by Hudson." So, I just want to make sure we had the name right. Yes, that's uh, it's pasta by Hudson. Okay, and what do, what do you? There are several businesses at one eighty seventh. Which one are you replacing? So I was, there was a burger place that used to be called Cream Line. And that's where I would be taking the Cream Line space. Okay. It's a small, intimate space, a little less than 400 square feet. Um, primarily in my business, uh, we are currently located in Columbus Circle. And we've been operating for about a year and a half. And we just do a lot of takeout and delivery. That's all I have. Any questions from committee members? Inga. All right, I mean, so you do a lot of takeout and I know it's a small space. What are you doing with bikes and deliveries? Where are you keeping the bikes? Who are you, do you have an outside delivery person? Yeah, so um, great question. We will be using uh, Grubhub for any deliveries and uh, their bikes, but a lot of our, speaking from experience now, most of, and actually because of COVID, we're actually temporarily closed. Um, and we closed down on March 27th, but we're hoping to open up right after Labor Day when the market opens back up because we're in the uh, turnstile market. But I've been keeping myself very busy uh, since we've been closed, which I can go into later if you want to know. Um, with that being said, um, we have a really nice blend of clientele. We do uh, lots of kids uh, in schools, which is going to be interesting in September. Um, we do a lot of families. We do a lot of people that um, work in the neighborhood. And then we do a lot of, of course, uh, tourism because it's Columbus Circle and there's the, the train stations there and a lot of uh, foot traffic to the Time Warner Center. So a lot of it is a pickup to the neighborhood. Um, I was actually in the neighborhood for about 20 years where I worked and operated another restaurant um, for close to 20 years and then moved to open up this little small intimate uh, restaurant. And so just to answer your question about bikes, if any bikes are used, it would be through Grubhub. Uh, but a lot of our um, food, we really cater to the community. And our pasta and pizza is best served fresh on the go or to a quick pickup. So it's a lot of people that are just coming home, getting off the trains or walking these days and swinging by and picking something up and usually living in the neighborhood. Um, that's kind of my experience to date when I spent 20 years in my other restaurant. I was really a part of the neighborhood and where I am now. Um, and even actually coming to Chelsea, being brand new, oddly enough, um, right after uh, the pandemic started, I uh, fed the Chelsea FDNY, the EMTs on 23rd Street off of, uh, I think that's off of, uh, what avenue is that, 9th, I believe, uh, between 10th and 11th, maybe, at the EMT okay. station. Yeah, so, um, yeah. A lot of my experiences with intimate locations these days and dealing with really culturally, culturally rich like neighborhoods. I'm also born and raised New Yorker. Okay, but so Grubhub, they come on a bike and they park their bike. There's a lot of obstacles. On, you're between 21st and 20th or 21st? Yeah, it's between, it's between 21st and 20th on 7th Avenue. Okay, that's what I thought because you're farther down. So Okay, now I'm gonna order food. I'm not walking over, I'm on 23rd Street between 9th and 10th. I'm not walking to get my pasta, I'm gonna order it. So someone's gonna come with a bike, drop it on the sidewalk or tie it to a tree, which they're not supposed to. Um, I don't think there are any bike corrals around there. So if you're doing a lot of business, people don't tend to walk to the restaurant to pick up their food, they have it delivered. So you're gonna have a lot of bikes on the sidewalks, the Grubhub people coming in and out. So you might want to figure out a way to keep them off the sidewalk. I know there's okay. parking in front of you. Maybe apply for a parking, a bike corral. I don't know. I'm taking notes by the way. Okay. I mean, you can apply to the city. Christine's not here or she would be telling you how to apply for a bike corral in front of the restaurant. Cause there are a lot of bikes chained up to everything on that block. So it's sort of like an obstacle course. Yeah, Brandon, my office has that information, so we'll be able to provide it to you. 
Okay, great, thanks. So you might want to apply for one in the street, and what that is is they put a bike corral out on the street and take up a parking space so that the sidewalk is nice and free. Because in Chelsea, we pay to go exercise. We don't walk to get our food. I don't know why. <laughs> Other than that, I think it's fine. Can Anybody I take, ask a question? Carry? Yeah, I just to take a moment to educate myself, and if it's inappropriate, please let me know. But um, does the 500-foot rule apply to an establishment like this or request? Because just, you are... No. The 500-foot rule does not apply to beer and wine licenses. Okay, okay. Full liquor licenses. Okay, thanks. That was inappropriate. I, that was inappropriate. I, <laughs> I ask because it's next to Liz, Lizzie, and, and there are a number of things on the block that are... Yes. Okay. Thank you. And appropriate question. Your first question on the committee, it was appropriate. Anybody else on the committee? Um, anybody signed up, Nellie? Ron Walker has his hand raised, but no one from the uh, public. Rob? Rob, you want to say something? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, it is a residential building. Uh, the only concern I have is the 1 a.m. Um, Monday through Thursday. Uh, would they be willing on maybe uh, lowering that to like uh, 11 or 12 uh, Monday through Thursday? And then, uh, sorry, uh, Sunday to Thursday and then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday doing 1 a.m.? And plus it's never had a liquor license there. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If that that I'm totally uh, open and flexible. Can can we? Can I request to do uh, midnight Sunday through Thursday, and then one a.m. on Friday, and or whatever you recommend, uh, midnight on Sunday through Thursday, and one a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, we usually do. And, uh, I, we usually do Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the weekends. Okay, cool. And there are a lot of other bars and restaurants there that are takeout and open late, so. True, it is an app. Mm -hmm. It's packed. Do we have the new hours down, Frank? I don't know what the other feeling is, but I'm okay with the hours. I'm the, original okay with the, hours the original hours, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah me, me too. Uh, you know, I don't see a change there as necessary. Yeah, I don't think so. I guess they're not. That's, uh... so back to 1 a.m. across the board, it sounds like. Yeah, there are too many other places that are open that late. How are you with that, Rob? <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Okay, well, we'll find out. I, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I realized my mistake on this, and I agree with you all. Okay, we have a consensus on the hours. Okay, I think that's the only thing holding us up from an introduction of a resolution. Anyone want to introduce? Thing just to say, um, Christine's not here, so I feel like I have to do this. Winter awnings. The outside. Yes, the awnings. Um, you know those things that you put up, like little tiny apartments on the sidewalk that are made out of cloth for the winter to keep the cold out. Oh, the storm uh, enclosures. Storm enclosures. Thank you. You're welcome. They said they're not going to have one. Good. Just no. make sure that if you change your mind, it is not wider than 18 inches. All the other ones are illegal. Yes. Okay. That's it. You very nicely channeled Christine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, now, no, do no we have a resolution? Motion. Okay, a motion? Second. Second. Morgan seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, against? <clears throat> Abstaining? Present not eligible. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a thank great you. evening, Good. everyone. It's an honor and pleasure, everybody. Seriously, thank you very much for welcoming me to the community. I'm really, really excited. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck on your move to Chelsea. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Okay, the last item on the agenda, other than what we're going to talk about transfers of licensing, 
is item number four. Again, a new liquor license. This is 623 9th Avenue at 44th Street. It's a corporation called Lotus West, but it will be doing business as a pulperia. Uh, the applicant, George, are you the lawyer? You're muted, George. I think George, I got it. Okay. Have it. Hi. Good evening. I, my name is My name is George Carp. I'm the I'm the attorney for Lotus West, and uh, as it's, as you indicated, this is on the corner of 44th Street and uh, and 9th Avenue. Uh, it's the former, for those that remember, was Alegria for many years. I happen to represent them all over. This is. Uh, the people who are uh, the applicant, uh, Joaquin Martinez, is involved, was involved with Pulper Rear on, on 46th Street and when they had one up on 84th Street and 2nd Avenue, uh, both of which unfortunately they had to leave because of problems with the landlord raising the rent beyond what they were willing to pay. So they would found this location and because uh, they're in the neighborhood and uh, for that reason uh, they would like to open up basically on the theme of pulperia and for those that live in the this area uh, pulperia has been around for about five years it closed several months ago uh, but it had a very good reputation and was very well known it was a little smaller than this restaurant i believe they want to open using that theme. Uh, Betty, the, the manager of the, is who is with us, uh, Victor Medina is uh, here and he worked in that restaurant for, for all the years it was there. Uh, Joaquin Martinez also uh, towards the end was uh, one of the managers of the premises. Uh, he'd like to open up, same thing, same motif, same style with many, with same menu as you saw that which was attached the menu uh, was the menu from 46th street uh, we uh, he, he is here now i think if you have any questions about it we we're looking for a wine a wine and beer and liquor and the hours that we requesting and for a certain reason we're requesting for closing hours we want to close at at 8, 11, excuse me, at midnight, Monday through Thursday, but they are looking, and, and on uh, Sundays, but they are looking for um, 4 a.m. on the weekends. And the reason for that is they've learned from their restaurant, which they've operated really without any issues with the community, uh, as far as I know, the, um, that the, People that are hit, that follow that restaurant, they're South Americans, and they have the tradition of eating eating late. It's nothing unusual for people to walk in at one o'clock in the morning uh, at Pulperia and sit down and have a full dinner. Uh, so that's why we're asking for that reason. Uh, restaurant is not it had, the bar is only nine people. It's not going to be a particularly bar crowd. It's a restaurant. Um, as Alec Rear was run for many years, that was Italian, but there was no problem with that restaurant. So they're going to follow what, what this neighborhood is used to and what, what they want, except they're bringing a very good restaurant here. And I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Joaquin Martinez just to introduce himself. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. It's right here. On my mirror. Are you hearing me now? Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Joaquin Martinez, and um, I'm uh, the owner of uh, this new place. We're really um, we're trying to open, um, despite all of these, uh, you know, uh, hard times that we are facing, and um, we hope to have uh, your support. We have emailed earlier today um, a few uh, sheets with the uh, supporters 
of our liquor license in the neighborhood. Um, we send it to Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, and then um, we're counting on you, you know, to, to create jobs like I, the way I see it, because we really need to, this is what we do, this is our life. We've been doing, uh, I think in the service industry for 20 years, the Upper West Side and Pulperia. And now um, we close the two restaurants. Uh, we had Upper West Side and 44, like our attorney said. And then uh, we're planning to have to, to create, a, you know, an income here with this. Is uh, we are we are doing an extremely, uh, you know, it's it's very. It has been hard for us um, losing all what we had and then try to reinvent uh, again what we are going to be doing. And we're counting on your support to get this record license and to open as soon as we can. Thank you. Um, I have a couple uh, technical questions, uh, maybe for you, George. Um, I noticed neither Mr. Martinez or uh, Mr. Medina were on the prior Pulperia liquor licenses. Is that right? Those are in the name of the chef, Carlos Barras and Anthony Mayer Jr. Is that correct? You're muted again. That's my understanding. Okay. So have either of these gentlemen uh, had a liquor license before? No. no, this is their first, but both have been in the industry for many, many years. Okay. Um, I see Mr. Martinez this spring uh, got approved by Community Board 7, I think, to open a place at 226th, West 76th. Is that... Uh, West 79th, sorry. Is that going forward or is this instead of that? Yeah. Well, yes. Hi. Yeah, we had that project earlier um, in the year and we had everything pretty much ready to go. Uh, but then COVID came and actually we were approved by the community board on uh, the upper west side. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have to, again, lose money and do the lease. So. And are you going to be opening that place as well, or are you just doing Pulp Arena? Right no, I mean, hopefully, no, but no, no, we have no sadness because there is no, there's no way to have tables outside. It was a private club, Manhattan Cricket Club. Uh, it's a very fine dining and utility place, so we couldn't do anything else. So we lost it. Thank you. Uh, George, you uh, neglected to mention that between now and well, I'll agree, uh, we had uh, a fairly infamous operator in this space uh, that caused a lot of problems for about five or six years when it was Intermezzo and Gallonero and Caramia. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe that it was that long because I know there was a problem in the building here uh, from some, uh, some uh, prospective tenant who did some construction. So this place was really out for a number of years. But I understand and I know the group that you're talking about and I know all the problems that uh, came with that. Uh, they have no connection with them at all. I, they've never met them. Uh, I do know some of them from the area, but uh, these gentlemen, I've nothing, never had anything to do with them, nor have they had anything to do with any restaurant they've ever been in. Okay, so we, we can include steps that um, uh, the gentleman's name was Bessem Cucadge, Will not be involved in any Absolutely way. Absolutely, I, I, I will make it clear on something else. The, it's my understanding that this license here had actually been uh, revoked because of the prior actions. The land, the landlady, uh, the owner of the building, has made an application for a, um, a waiver of the two-year prohibition. If that doesn't come, we we don't get the restaurant. But uh, she's we given some information about Mr. Martinez and the landlord is very satisfied with his background and the background of the people that he works with. And uh, so we're waiting on actions of the uh, liquor authority because without their approval, we can't, even if we wanted to, could not uh, get a license. So we need them to do a waiver and uh, that's in the process now. How fast they will work under the current situation, I cannot tell you. Um, I think uh, we, we do not, and, and you probably know this, George, we don't uh, like to vote on sidewalk cafes until we have the approved DCA plans. Um, and in fact, in this case, 
under the current, and I'm talking about the permanent rules, not the open restaurant rules. Under the permanent rules, you can't fit a sidewalk cafe on 44th Street. Um, so I hope your client knows that because that sidewalk is only 11 feet, eight inches. And I know that because it's about 200 yards away and I just measured it. Uh, and given that you need eight foot pedestrian path and three foot service aisle, that would leave you eight inches for tables. Uh, so it just doesn't fit. Well, it, it's, a, it's had, had tables for... It's never had, I've lived here for 15 years. It's never had a sidewalk cafe. Well, I, that's not my experience and I did represent the owner for, for many years here. In fact, I got the original license. As far as I know, they had a license and I've seen it. I saw the, you know, that they had a license. With, it, they, had two, they had two tables out in front and they had some tables on the side. Well, it's possible, you know, the place across the street is grandfathered in because the law changed about 10 years ago and mandated the three foot service aisle. So that's possible. And, and the sidewalk cafe, would, yours wouldn't be grandfathered in because there's been this gap of, you know, several whatever, whatever the rules will be, we will follow. And if okay, that's but, but for purposes of this application, it would simplify things if we eliminate it. That, that doesn't prohibit, prohibit them from participating in open restaurants and all well, that. That's a complete I, I was, I, I, by the way, we put it in there as a courtesy just to let you know what, what, we, what we wanted. Uh, we understood it certainly is going to be the, the people who decide whether we get the license that we have to rely on. And, and we knew we had to be in front of the board when that happened. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, this place also has the peculiarity of having a sort of separate, sort of smaller doorway establishment on 44th Street. Right. It right. operated as usually as a pizza place. I was curious as to their, their plans for that space. Yes, uh, in the concept that we, we were opening uh, in Pulperia. We were serving uh, empanadas. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, turnover uh, appetizers. And uh, we want to do like a big list of empanadas and uh, uh, South America style street food, which is very easy to, to sell it to go. Okay, but it's got to be separate. I mean, there's, there's not going to be a connection inside for patrons, right? No, wait, wait, what's that question? They, they, there will be no uh, connection for patrons to pass through from one establishment to the other. Is that right? Oh, no. No, no that's a separate thing. So They're just connected through the kitchen. And the takeout will only be empanadas, or? Empanadas will get us, you know, pizzas, who knows? You know, we have a beautiful Greek oven, so, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, you didn't say anything about music. Uh, I assume it's only background music? Hello. Just background music? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, that was, I just want to introduce, in, interject here a second. The reason we're asking specifically about the music, we did come upon a review of the Second Avenue establishment, where the reviewer strongly suggested that it would be very difficult to have a conversation after, I don't know if it was 5.30 or 6.30 in the afternoon, because the decibel level was so high. Um, I assume you're not going to replicate that here on night. Correct, it's not going to be the same. Uh, in Upper East Side, we, uh, you know, we try to do a little bit more like festive, more uh, with the music. It was, was, uh, it was kind of a small space in the back. So we decided to turn off that, the system in the back. And, uh, we also had a good reputation after all in Upper East Side. Never we had a issue with them. It was a great review for the food. This was in the uh... Forbes magazine a couple of years ago. Uh, but the reviewer said after, even after the chef agreed to turn the music down, it was still, he still measured it at 90 decibels inside, which is pretty loud. Yeah. And by the way, guys, since you're talking about food, I just want to mention, I don't know, it's not the agenda, but Victor said it was in the New York Times, so they have to tomorrow in the entire section because it's also very useful. It's on uh, East Palace So uh, we will read it tomorrow. What I can try to tell, what I can say to you is that you know every every issue they might have, we always address it in order to become a better a, a better part of the community. Uh, saying that, uh, we have friends, we have a lot of friends and family. Uh, you know the reviews that we have online, uh, they can they can say that. Um, you know we have a, a 
good people coming to dine with us. And I'm very, uh, um, you know, positive that in this, you know, in this particular place, we will do something great. And uh, it's going to be a great restaurant where, you know, everyone can, can come here. A great addition to the Okay. Um, so just, just to finish off with this stuff, we have a letter from the West 44th Street Better Block Association, which is obviously centered on this block. Uh, they say they welcome the prospect of a restaurant coming into the former intermezzo space. Based on earlier experiences, we request the following stipulations. Uh, they ask that the hours be um, Monday, Thursday to midnight and Sunday to 1 a.m., which I guess is what you asked for. But they'd like you, know, you to close on Friday and Saturday at 2 a.m. Uh, they say if the side establishment is used, they'd like that to be closed at 11 p.m. Monday, Tuesday. 12 midnight Friday through Sunday. Um, they want the, our usual stipulations about doors and windows closed uh, whenever there's music inside and by no later than 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Uh, they ask for an acoustic study, um, no illuminated signage on 44th Street or on the corner. Uh, Inga, Inga Christine's stipulation about a storm enclosure <laughs> um, and that you attend block association meetings. Um, I think most of those are probably uncontroversial, except for the hours. Um, but uh, I just want to get that out there and we can have the committee discussion now. Okay. Uh, I see, uh, Inga, your hand is raised. It's been raised for a while. Anybody else on the committee want to have something to say? Uh, first, Inga. Okay. I have two things. Um, I know you have French doors, so when you have music on, and you have the doors open, you cannot hear the music outside. You have to keep it so low that when I'm walking on the sidewalk, I cannot hear your music. If the doors are open, basically no music. Um, the second thing is, Frank, what are the hours of the previous, what, what have they been licensed for? Have they had 4 a.m.s before? No, it's, it's uh, mid, midnight and 2 a.m., I believe. Yeah. So my personal feeling is, you know, I'm never against the 4 a.m., but for a new establishment with new owners, and if they had a 4 a.m., I would go for it, but I would want to do the hours that were previously licensed. I wouldn't want to increase them until they show that they're really good neighbors. And, and nothing, as a practical matter, nothing there has been open later than midnight. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I saw on some websites, so they're not losing business because the neighbors are open till four. So I don't I think even the other, according to their website, the, the 46th Street Pulperia was only open till 11 at midnight. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> 2 a.m. is actually a lot longer than they, than they stayed open there. Yeah, I'm okay. fine with 2 a.m. and midnight, but I wouldn't want to increase from what was already there until they've shown that they're good neighbors. Anybody else on the committee? Anybody want to say anything about the hours? Bob Walker has his hand raised. Rob? Yeah, hey. Um, I'm just uh, retouching upon what was said. Uh, there are two French doors uh, on each side of the main entrance on uh, Ninth Avenue. If uh, they could be shut uh, anytime there's music, or just really anytime at all. Uh, and then I, I agree, it's a new business. Uh, Saturday, Friday, 2 a.m., let them show that they're a good neighbor and then come back and extend the hours. That's it. Thanks, Rob. Um, anybody else, anybody, uh, other committee members? Nelly, anyone from the community have their hand raised? Uh, can I uh, add something? And I'd, I'd like to correct something so that there's no misunderstanding. About the back, the back room is, was a, uh, a pizza for many long time here, uh, right until the last, even the last people used it that, for that purpose. And what was said before, if I understood it, and I wanted to make it clear that the license here applies to the whole premises, including the back, and that's why they have wine, beer, uh, you know, and, and, and whatever they can serve, they can serve there in the back. Usually it was wine. 
Uh, there is a connection. It, it cannot be closed up. It's also a fire entrance exit. Uh, so I just want to make it clear. But although it's not a, there's no doorway, there's no sign, you know, telling people to go to the back or people to go to the front. It's the way it's always been for the last uh, 20, 25 years. Yeah. That's the way this restaurant has been set up. Right. Now, we appreciate the, uh, the clarification. And yes, we understand that the liquor license will apply to the entire premise, right. including, uh, including that side. Uh, and I just wanted to make it so no misunderstanding that we've said something that's not true. Chris. Evening, everyone. Um, just, just about the, the side um, storefront. Um, do we remember when that was operational, maybe like three, four tenants ago, how long that pizzeria was open to, whether or not it was- That pizzeria clock? has been there since 1995. That's when I got a their license. It was in place at that time. Yeah, and that's the oh, side storefront. Yeah. What was the time of operation is my question. Pardon me? The time of operation, when did you cease operations uh, in the evening at that pizzeria location? Uh, Chris, the it immediate was, prior owner has been was about a few years. It, it, wasn't, it was really a takeout and a, two or three people sat. At that time, they had a counter uh, where they had some stools, but now that we're not having that. No, the, the, not, the, it's, it's the issue, George, is, the, is the hours on the restaurant window will be open. That's, that's correct. Chris, the, the prior that's owner will be open. Operator there agreed to close that side space at midnight if nightly, but it was again never open that late. Yeah, generally not. Yeah, yeah. We're suggesting twelve o'clock um, on the weekends and eleven o'clock during the weekdays to close the back. You mean so yeah, no one enters? I'm, I'm not talking about the interior. I'm talking about the takeout. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's. And that's what you're fine. referring to, Chris. Right. That'll be fine. The takeout. That's correct. That's correct, Bert. Okay. okay. Anybody else have their hands up, Nelly? No. Okay. So, uh, George and uh, Ms. Martinez, if we could go through these steps orderly to make sure we're all in agreement. Uh, first, we're going to say this application doesn't apply to a sidewalk cafe, correct? Good. Doesn't mean you're not going to get one, but it's not covered by this application. Yes. Good. Fine. Okay. Uh, it looks like the consensus of the committee would be for to give you the hour, the hours for the main operation of uh, midnight Monday to Thursday, two a.m. Friday and Saturday, and one a.m. on Sunday. That is fine. Okay, uh, and then for the Forty Fourth Street side establishment, close at eleven p.m. Monday to Thursday, and midnight Friday and Saturday. That's okay. Okay. And again, um, as you heard in our earlier discussion, this means closed and vacated of, of patrons. So, um, Sunday through, for, you said Monday, close Sunday at 11 to the side? The side? Uh, we, I think it was, we had it for 1 a.m. The Block Association asked for 11 p.m. Monday to Thursday and midnight Friday through Sunday for the side. Okay, okay. I figured if, if that's what they want, we can go yeah, with that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, may, I ask some, may I just ask something? In, in terms of closing the back, I mean, this it's part of this restaurant. And, and if someone came in here and they were filled and they needed something in the back, they could see someone. But as long as it came out of the front, not out of the side, it won't yes. be open. Yeah. yeah. The, the goal is to have the, the well, doors on 44. No access, yeah not used for entering and exits after those times. Thank you. And those hours don't have anything to do with who's sitting down and eating, getting food from the front. Coming in and out. Fair okay. Enough. And then in terms of the doors and windows, and, and George, this will be a change from your STIP form. Uh, we, we want the doors and windows to be closed whenever there's any amplified music or any amplified sound or any music inside. And then even if there's no sound inside, closed at 10 p.m. Uh, weeknights and 11 p.m. Friday, Saturday. So, so, man, is it the understanding that on a nice day, on a on a weekend, when we have they have brunch and they have some background music, they cannot keep the doors open? That that is what's being asked for. 
windows. I mean, the, you know. Yeah, those, those, seriously, noise travels through those things incredibly, through those French doors. So we're not saying you can't have them open. You just can't have, you can't have music. Well, yeah. You don't want to hear the music on the sidewalk. Well, that, that I can understand. All right, that, that's different than saying that we have to close it. Yes, the music can be lowered, but you will have to agree to that. But, but I don't think that having no music, I think that's kind of hurts their business. It doesn't work. You, it, you, if, if they're open, you're going to hear the music. Well, yeah. I think someone mentioned the same thing before. They said that the music will not be heard outside, but it, it, they're not giving up giving up the music. Yeah, so no, everyone, everyone tonight has agreed to, these are our standard stipulations, and everyone ahead of you has agreed to them. Mm -hmm. I don't think I heard that, but okay. Right. The, these are not yeah. unusual stipulations. This is, this, is all, this is almost on every single applicant that intends to have, has that kind of a frontal structure and has music. Every yeah. applicant agrees to that. Because whether I'm sitting on the edge or standing right next to the outdoor window, you can't stop the music from going outside if the doors are open. You just can't. Okay. And I guess if you're okay with that, I'm willing to forego the acoustic report that the Block Association asked for. I mean, it's it's been operating for a long time. I leave that to my clients if they're there. Okay. Well, as long as the music is low, it's not, it doesn't mean that we don't have to have music. It's like very low, like let's say ambience. You could have as much music inside as you want, but if there's music, it can't be heard outside on the street. So the doors and windows have your choice is to have music and the doors closed or no music and the doors open. Yeah. Because your neighbors will walk by and call every time you have music with the doors open. Even if it's for brunch or like lunch? Any time. Okay. Okay. Um, with right. those, are we fine with those tips then? Because if we are, we're I'll not, ask. Now we got a lot more to go. Okay. Oh, okay, Frank. They're, they're easy from here on in though. Um, <laughs> Uh, there'll be no illuminated signs on the 44th Street side or on the corner of 44 and 9th? Yeah, you mentioned that already. You're okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any storm enclosure, you know, it's that plastic thing around the doorway that Ingus talked about, won't extend more than 18 inches from the building. That, that's also the law. The best thing to do is just put something on the inside, some nice heavy velvet curtains on the inside. It's you otherwise people can't get through the sidewalk if it's cold yes yeah okay uh the owners and managers will attend block meet block association meetings as requested okay with that uh and the phone numbers of the restaurant managers will be provided to the block association and any residents who request them okay um and then as i said before and you shouldn't care about this um uh, the former operator of this location, Bessem QCADGE, will have no involvement whatsoever in the applicant's operations, whether as an owner, manager, consultant, or employee. So no financial connection. Um, and then um, also that he has no involvement or ownership interest in your corporation, the Lotus West Corporation. Okay. And last thing, I think this is obvious, but we've been having a lot of problems with uh, open restaurants. There'll be no music whatsoever outside, live, amplified, and no music in the sidewalk cafe or on the sidewalk or anything. You okay with that? All right, George. And the last thing, if we could get a actual floor plan for inside. He's you're muted. George, you're muted. You're muted. still muted, George. Yeah, okay. Now, now I, got it. I got it. I got it now. Yeah, we'll, we, we can uh, get you that. 
it, it can be hand it can be handwritten, but just someone who shows us where the tables are. Right. Right. And I think Nellie said Nelly said her deadline is the 29th of August. 26th. 26th. What was that? The deadline to get the, the plan to the office. Okay, oh, sure, you'll have it well before. Okay. Uh, George, do you have any sense when you're going to hear from the SLA about the two-year thing? No, that, it's, with what's going on, it's hard to really get too much information, but we're hoping it'll come sooner than later. So you're going to wait to file until you hear no, from No, we're going to file first. Okay. And, All right. We'll take that chance. Okay, so everyone's okay with all those steps I read? Yes? Yep. Okay. Now I'm asking you, George and the applicant, you're okay with all of that? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Did you say that again? All the steps I just read, you're, we're okay with all of them. It's as best as I could hear them, yes. I'd like, I'm just going to ask Nellie if you could get me a copy of them as soon as you can. You might be able to email them to me. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Nellie. <laughs> Okay, so we have a resolution. Do I hear? Yes. Inga, and a second? Second. second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining, present not eligible. Thank you, guys. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Buena suerte. Buena suerte. I'd like to hear what, you say, what you're doing on that note. I'd like to hear what you're going to say about the uh, <laughs> transfers the of license. Yeah. Right. So don't okay. run away. Don't run away. Stay with us. I'm going to wait. Okay. Um, so, you know, as the restaurant industry gets bleaker and bleaker, um, we've been hearing a lot about restaurants that are trying to transfer ownership entirely. In other words, transfer the lease, transfer all the fixtures and everything. <laughs> and we're getting a lot of questions about whether liquor licenses can be transferred. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to address that briefly. Um, I want to remind everyone that this meeting is being, being recorded and will be available. So I'd like to keep the discussion on the level of general policy and not start speculating about whether this may be happening or not in specific places. And I also want to be clear that what I'm going to summarize is the law as it stands now. Uh, who knows, there could be some emergency order that changes this. Um, I don't think anyone ever expected there'd be all these to-go sales. But at the moment, the law is clear that a liquor license is specific to the individual or entity on the license and the location. So if I get a license for 44th, for this place, say in the corner here at 44th and 9th Avenue, that license is only good for me and only for that location. Uh, if I want to get out of the business, I can, you know, maybe sublet the premises, I can sell the furniture but I cannot transfer the liquor license to a new proprietor. The new proprietor has to apply for his or her own liquor license. Similarly, if I wanted to move next door, I can't take the liquor license with me. I have to get the SLA's approval even to move the liquor li my own license from one spot to another. So the license is very specific to both the individual who gets it and the place where he or she gets it. Um, and the law, you know, several places in the alcohol uh, law says uh, no license shall be transferable or assignable uh, except in certain changes of corporate form. Uh, so a license is issued to any person uh, for any licensed premise and shall not be transferable to any other person or to any other premise or to any other part of the building. Uh, the SLA also forbids this practice called the veiling, uh, which is if, if I have a liquor license, I have to remain in charge and responsible for the premise. I can't step away and say, Bert's going to take over and run the business and I'm going to have nothing to do with it, but Bert's going to run it under my license. It's called the veiling. It doesn't work that way. Similarly, I can't bring in a new partner like, uh, Inga say and say, you know, you're going to run this place with me and I'm going to give you half the profits. Uh, an owner cannot share revenue from licensed business with someone who has not been disclosed to the SLA. Uh, so the protections are pretty strong that under current law that would say you cannot 
simply sell or transfer a license along with the rest of the restaurant. Um, I think people here know about the Southern Hospitality Place at 44th and 9th who tried to do that. Uh, the SLA actually brought charges against them uh, for availing and there was a hearing scheduled just as COVID uh, erupted. So the hearing got adjourned, but the SLA is definitely looking into the availing situation there where basically Southern Hospitality turned into Gainsworth without you know, anyone having any, any say about it. George, do you uh, basically agree? No, the current law is that a license could never just be transferred. The perp what happens is when, when you sell a, a business, you put your own license into safekeeping and that allows the new person to get his temporary license if, they, if the liquor authority grants it to him. But at no time do you ever really sell your license. The only, when, on a transfer, what you're doing is just agreeing to put your license in safekeeping. And then when you, his license finally comes and he gets his temporary, then his full license, then your license gets canceled and then a new person takes over. So it's never really a sale of, of yeah. the- And you can only get a temporary if you've applied for a new license and if the place had been open within the past 30 days. That is right. That's uh, so true. it's really a short window. Uh, but again, all this is still contingent on the new operator applying for his oh, or her absolutely. license. Absolutely. New operator has to be, and everybody in it has to be told to the authority. Otherwise, they, as you say, availing occurs. And that's, that's a tough one to, to yeah. get caught on that. Hmm. The reason we're having this informational piece by Frank is a number of people in the community have raised, have raised concerns to us about, quote unquote, transferring of licenses and questioning that. So we wanted to be clear to everybody what exactly is the process and what is within the parameters of the process and what is outside. Um, there might be there might be people in the committee that have questions or statements or people here and. Right, and we should also welcome uh, Chris LeBron who uh, made a comment on the last application and is a, is a member of the community board for, although not a member of this committee. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, I actually did have a question um, and this can go to George or Bert or Frank or Inga. So right now, we're seeing a commercial rent. Uh, landlords are unwilling to lower rent for restaurants and bars and small businesses. Um, if they are willing to lower it, they lower it. Not to a percentage, there's no real forgiveness on there. Um, is, is there any legality to a landlord um, finding a third party and offering an outright buyout of an operator? It's like soup to nuts, everything inside the restaurant, all the bottles, all the fruit, food products, and a liquor license uh, to hand over to that third party. The yeah. only way you can, if I may, is if you buy a corporation, and very, very few people want to do that. You pick up a lot of debts that you don't want to know about. So, but you can theoretically buy the corporation, and the license does stay with the corporation, but the new people have to be approved by the liquor authority. And it, ha and it goes, be goes to the board, if 80% or if it's sale of more than 80%, 80% or more of the shares, it goes to the community board. It has to be notified. That's the current rule. But that's still, the, the new owners still have to be approved. Um, Absolutely. The liquor authority, yes. Yeah. Basically, the liquor authority insists on knowing every individual who is, who is selling liquor. And that's one of their bedrock principles. So. Yes. As a practical matter, a landlord or an existing operator cannot sell a business complete with the liquor license. The liquor license just does not transfer that way. And even if they want to sell the liquor from the- right, well, If he buys the corporation, you, can, you get the license with it. You got to be approved, but you, right. that license stays with the corporation. Yeah, but it still, it still has to go through the SLA. And you can't even- sell the uh, old liquor from the old uh, the old establishment unless you get what's called the liquidators permit not so, if you buy the not if you buy the company 
Okay, but again, we we discussed that that's a rare. Right. Yes, rare of course occurrence. it is. Yes. And second question. This is the final one. If there are small businesses being harassed by, saying, hey, uh, I'm only receiving twenty percent of your rent every month. I have someone willing to come in at this price point and they want to buy you out. Is that any, a form of tenant harassment? And if so, who should they go to uh, um, within the community board or um, bureaucratically through the city? So you're saying that the landlords are doing that? Hypothetically. Well, that I really haven't come across. I know there's some difficulty in getting them to work with the tenants. It's a big problem that they all have, but some have been cooperative and I must say they, they really have. Um, but I have not heard of what you've said as happening, but I would not, it wouldn't surprise me if, I, if someone was doing that. Yeah. So, so who would uh, a corporation small business owner go to if they're approached by a landlord with such? Uh, I guess it's, it's beyond. License, I can notify the liquor authority that it's not a true deal. If it isn't, I don't know. The other thing, Chris, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's well beyond my expertise, but. Legally done or whether it's, a sleight of hand of somehow getting it from one to the other. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can think of, Chris, would be to have them go to the small business services um, to see if, you know, they, because I honestly don't know what the, what the law is if you're in arrears on a commercial lease. I, I just don't know what your rights are. I would also go to the other local elected. I would go, well, to, I think so. yeah, go to your local elected because there are businesses that can't pay their rent. Even if they don't have a liquor license, say it's a clothing store or a small store, the landlord says, okay, you're out. I will buy what you have and put someone else in. So they, yeah, they need to go to their electeds. I would involve them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> this is a process. Right now. This is a process that really is not, it's hard to define legally mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's what is wrong legally, you know, what's, what's harassment at what point? I don't think it's really defined uh, between a- Paying rent. Um, a commercial owner, a commercial renter. It's mm -hmm. certainly defined in a residential context, right. but I don't think it's defined in a commercial context. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. No, it just happened to a friend of mine in the West Village. Flagging something like this is really important. Our number is about 40% uh, loss of small businesses in New York City by the end of this pandemic, possibly up to 65%. So I, I want to make sure that small businesses in Hell's Kitchen and Chelsea understand that they have uh, uh, a layer of protection from something uh, encroachments like this. I don't know that there is anything, like Bert said, I don't think there's anything to find. Like some businesses, they'll, if you're renting a commercial lease or, or retail, you may have to take out a letter of credit for a year. So if, you're, if you signed your lease and you took out a letter of credit and you stopped paying, they can draw that letter of credit and kick you out and they've got a year's worth of rent. So there are a lot of different things. We just don't know, but I would... If they feel harassed, they should contact their local electeds, definitely. Yeah. I want to thank you for the time to ask these questions. I appreciate it. Of course, I'm being forced out, but thank you, everybody, and good night. Thank you. Good thank night, you. George. Thank you. Hey, now, is, is there anybody with a hand raised that you see who's not visible? Morgan, did you have your hand raised before? Okay. okay. So I think we're done. Welcome to our new member. Yes, welcome. This is a short meeting. Welcome. One of our shorter and meetings. And, and, one of, and one of the smoother ones, at least for the first three applicants. So. And I want you guys to make sure you tell Christine that I did represent her. <laughs> you did. Yeah, you, you, you guys were ruthless on the doors and windows, too. <laughs> <laughs> Christine will be proud. Yes. Okay. Okay. Maybe Thank you to adjourn. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of August. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.